Thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, I'm glad to be giving this talk today. Uh, so I would like to talk today about uh, the existence of minimal models for generalized pairs. And everything I will say essentially is joint work with Vladimir Lazic. And I would also like to present uh, during my talk a few arguments why it is meaningful to work with generalized pairs. But before I get to this point, I would like to recall a few basic stuff about uh, the minimal model program in general. So, which I will just abbreviate as MMP. Um, so the minimal model is essentially uh, fundamental for the classification theory of complex projectivities. And uh, its aim is essentially the following. Given, let's say, uh, a smooth projective variety, uh, the MMP aims to construct uh, via a finite sequence of well understood birational modifications uh, another uh, birational model, let's say X prime, uh, which is in general uh, mild singular, and which comes equipped with uh, a vibration to a variety Y. Um, more specifically, uh, the MMP predicts that uh, if uh, the given variety X is uniruled, uh, i.e. if it's covered by rational curves, then uh, the outcome F uh, from X prime to is a so-called uh, modifier space. And uh, I will just mention some characteristic properties is that this is a vibration to a lower dimensional variety. So the dimension of Y smaller than the dimension of X. And um, if F denotes a general fiber of this vibration, then uh, the anti-canonical class of a general fiber is ample. In other words, the general fibers of this vibration are singular Fano varieties. And I will also like to mention that in this case, uh, the Cordelia dimension of X is uh, negative. Uh, in the complementary case, uh, when X uh, is not unirolled, then uh, the variety X prime uh, resulting from the minimal model program uh, is called uh, a minimal model of X. And here, the characteristic property is that uh, its canonical class is NEF, which means that uh, it intersects every curve non negatively. And uh, the existence of the vibration F, uh, let me say, say that existence. Of F is uh, predicted by the abundance conjecture. Which is uh, therefore one of the central open problems in uh, birational geometry. Uh, it is also a consequence of the abundance conjecture that in this case, uh, the quadratic dimension of X uh, is not negative. And more precisely, we can also distinguish two, two cases. So if uh, the quadratic dimension of X is actually maximal, in other words, if X is a variety of general type, uh, then uh, we know that KX, so KX prime is uh, the pullback of KY, and um, KY in this case. So the canonical class of, of the image of my uh, vibration F uh, is ample. And of course, F is in this case a birational vibration. While if um, the quadratic dimension of X is non-negative, but 3T smaller than the dimension of X, then um, F uh, is a non-birational vibration.
And in this case, we know that the canonical class of X prime is the pullback of uh, a numbers divisor on Y. And moreover, in this case, if F uh, denotes a general fiber of F, then uh, uh, the quadratic dimension of, of the general fiber is going to be zero. So um, the absolute of this discussion so far is the following, that um, the MMP predicts that there are essentially three building blocks in uh, birational geometry. And these are the following three classes of varieties. So the first class is the class of varieties whose canonical class is ample. And I call them canonically polarized here in this talk. The second class is uh, th those varieties whose canonical class is trivial, which I call here Calabi-Yau. And the third class is uh, those varieties whose, whose anti-canonical class is ample, which are uh, called fan varieties. <clears throat> and moreover, we also see from the above discussion that um, there are two central problems in the MMP, which I am going to discuss about uh, today. And these are precisely the existence of minimal models, first of all, which I may abbreviate later as MM, and also the existence of uh, Mori fiber spaces. Um, okay. So far, um, for presentation purposes, um, I have only talked about uh, varieties. Uh, even though I have already hinted at that uh, we also have to allow certain so-called mild singularities. But in general, uh, in the minimal model program, we work with somewhat uh, more complicated objects, which are called uh, pairs. And I would like to remind you, first of all, what a pair is. So a pair XB uh, consists of uh, normal projective variety X and uh, an effective uh, two divisor B on X. Such that uh, KX plus B uh, is two Carty. And uh, we do not necessarily work with smooth objects, but we also allow uh, mild singularities. And for instance, I will mention the following two classes without defining them. For instance, uh, we work with so-called Kavamata log terminal pairs. Or, um, Log canonical pairs. I will not attempt to give a definition in this talk for these uh, classes of singularities, but uh, you can think of them as follows. So imagine that X is a smooth variety and that B, the boundary, is a divisor with simple normal crossing support. And if the coefficients of B lie in the open interval 0, 1, then my pair is going to have Kavamata log terminal singularities. But if uh, the coefficients of B line the closed interval 0, 1, in other words, if I also allow some of the coefficients to be equal to 1, then my pair is going to have log canonical singularities. Um, in this setting, um, the MMP uh, has been confirmed completely in full generality in dimensions up to 3. But uh, we could say that it is in general is widely open in higher dimensions. Uh, 
However, um, we already know two uh, very important results. So we already know uh, the existence of minimal models for uh, KLT pairs of uh, general type. So these are uh, pairs whose canonical class K plus B has maximal quadratic dimension. And um, this was proved uh, in the fundamental paper of uh, Birker, Cassini, Hecken, and McKernan. And we also know uh, the existence of modifiber spaces for log canonical pairs. Uh, in the KLT setting, again, by the paper of Birker, Cassini, Hecken, and McKernan. And the extension to the log canonical setting was achieved by uh, Hasizum and Hu. So essentially, in the remainder of my talk, when I'm talking about minimal models, essentially I'm considering the non-general type case. Um, classically, uh, the MMP works in this setting, but in recent years, and when I say recent, I mean maximally five to six years ago, uh, a generalized concept of pairs appeared, which is called uh, generalized pairs. And this concept of pairs was introduced by Birka and Jang. And since then, uh, it has played an instrumental role in recent developments in birational geometry. Um, roughly speaking, um, generalized pairs are uh, couples of the form x uh, b plus m, where x b uh, is a usual pair. So I mean a pair as above. And M is an auxiliary divisor uh, which has uh, certain positivity properties. For instance, uh, M can be sometimes net. So um, I'm going to give the general definition uh, the, and the formal definition now, but uh, because it may be quite complicated the first time you see it, this is also what you can keep in mind, that roughly speaking, this is essentially a pair, and we also have an auxiliary divisor with certain positivity properties. I say here that M can be sometimes NEF, but what is actually true is that M is just the push forward of an NEF divisor sitting on some higher model. So let me now give the formal definition. Uh, a generalized pair, which is abbreviated as uh, G pair, consists of the following data. Uh, so we have a normal projective variety X. Uh, we have uh, an effective two divisor on X. And we also have this um, projective biracial morphism from a normal variety X prime to X. And on X prime, we have a divisor uh, M prime, which is NEF such that um, the divisor kx plus b plus m is 2 car t, where m is just uh, the push forward of m prime. Um, usually we denote uh, generalized pairs by uh, x b plus m, of course, if we take M to be zero, then we just recover the usual definition of pairs. And I would also like to mention that 
um, generalized pairs are somehow, in a sense, flexible with respect to X prime and M prime. And by this, I mean that if I replace X prime with some higher model, X double prime, and if I replace M prime with its pullback on this higher model, X double prime, then the new data I obtain define essentially the same zip pair structure on X. And just as in the case of usual pairs, we can again uh, define uh, singularities like a matlock terminal, log canonical in an analogous way. And we can also run, uh, be because due to the very recent paper of Hakon and Liu, also the MMP in the setting of uh, generalized pairs. So um, having seen this definition, you may also wonder uh, where does the, the motivation for this definition come from? And um, one of the answers is the so-called uh, canonical bundle formula. So And to be more uh, precise, uh, let us consider the following important question in the MMP. So are singularities preserved in an MMP? More precisely, suppose that I, I'm given um, a pair, KLT or log canonical, uh, XP. Suppose that I also run an MMP which terminates with a minimal model uh, X prime B prime of XB. And now if I ask uh, what kind of singularities does this minimal model of XB have, uh, it is a fairly simple consequence of the negativity lemma that the singularities are preserved. And namely, if XB is KLT, then this X prime B prime is going to be KLT. And if it's log canonical, then I'm also going to have log canonical singularities here. And, and if we now also assume that the abundance conjecture holds in general, then um, the canonical class KX prime plus B prime has to define uh, a vibration to another variety Y. And now, uh, we are also interested in figuring out what kind of singularities the variety Y itself has, or whether it is even possible to endow it with a structure of a pair and compare its singularities with the singularities of our original pair. And to try to answer this question, we have to consider the following setting. So say that we are given again um, a KLT or a local canonical pair, and which comes equipped with a vibration. So uh, by this I mean uh, projective subjective morphisms with connected fibers. Um, which satisfies that Kx plus B is essentially the pullback of some uh, Cartier divisor D on Y. So the datum here is uh, is known usually as uh, a KLT or LC trivial vibration. And by the fundamental work of Kavamata, Ambro, Fujino, Gongion, and others, we know that in this case, uh, there exists uh, there exist certain Q divisors, let's say uh, by and my on y, uh, such that uh, so these are Q divisors, such that d is uh, Q linearly equivalent to ky plus by plus my, and in particular we may write kx plus b as the pullback of ky plus by plus my. And having done that, it is reasonable to wonder whether it is somehow possible to choose a divisor my in such a way that uh, by plus my forms a boundary for a usual pair. 
And it turns out that if XB has scaled the singularities, then by the works of Amber and Kavamata, this is possible. However, if XB has log canonical singularities, then this is still an open problem. Um, however, it turns out that we can treat this guy here as a generalized pair. And um, the reason is that if we work in this setting, uh, it is possible to prove, I mean, uh, it, it, it follows from the works of Ambro, Kavamata, and others that um, there is essentially some higher model, let's say Y prime of Y, and an F divisor uh, sitting on this model Y prime, which pushes down to MY. And essentially this theorem and this discussion here with chemical band formula motivates the definition of generalized pairs. Um, having said all that, it's now time to move to the main topic of my talk, which is uh, about the uh, existence of minimal models and also their relations to the so-called uh, weak statistic decompositions. So let me just call this um, minimal models. And weak Zarisk decompositions. Mm. If um, we have uh, a generalized pair in general, XP plus M, and if we also have a minimal model for this generalized pair, which uh, essentially means that phi, the map phi is a birational contraction, In other words, a birational map whose inverse does not contract any divisors. And also the canonical class K X prime plus B prime plus M prime is an F. And if uh, we consider a resolution of indeterminacies of phi, so let's say we have this diagram. So this is a resolution of indeterminacies. See, then uh, by using the negativity lemma, uh, uh, we can write the following: that the pullback of k plus b plus m is essentially the pullback of, um, sorry, here um, I have X prime. So it's the pullback of KX prime plus B prime plus M prime plus E. And because KX prime plus B prime plus M prime is a minimal model of XP plus M, this means that this divisor is net and hence its pullback is net. And it is a consequence of the negativity lemma that this divisor here is effective. The expression that I have uh, written here is actually a prototype uh, for um, what as a risk decomposition is. So essentially, as a risk decomposition is the decomposition of a divisor into an F and an effective part. So here is the formal definition. So we say that a generalized pair XB plus M admits a weak risk decomposition.
uh, which I will abbreviate as WZD, if uh, there is a projective birational morphism let's say G from some normal variety uh, W to X and a numerical equivalence so the pullback of K plus B plus M it can be written as P plus M where uh, P is an F divisor. And N is an effective uh, QRT divisor on W. So essentially, a weak series decomposition means that up to passing to a higher model, the canonical class of my generalized pair decomposes into an F and an effective part. And the, the prototype and the, the motivation for the definition already comes from what I said above. And essentially, the, the above discussion also shows that if my generalized pair or my usual pair, if you will, has a minimal model, then it automatically admits a weak Zariski decomposition. And one may wonder also if the converse implication is true, namely, if my pair has a weak Zariski decomposition, whether it also has a minimal model. And I'm going to answer that. Uh, essentially, the answer is yes, but uh, we need a little bit of work for this. So let me begin by uh, stating some theorems, first of all, concerning uh, the existence of weak Zariski decompositions. So this is, uh, let me call it theorem one, which was obtained um, by uh, Lalic and myself. We assume uh, the existence of weak Zariski decompositions for uh, log canonical generalized pairs of dimension at most n minus 1. And now let xb be um, a usual pair. Uh, a log canonical usual pair of dimension n uh, such that its canonical divisor kx plus b is uh, pseudo effective. In other words, its numerical class is a limit of numerical classes of effective divisors. But we also assume that. If I subtract a little bit from the boundary, then this divisor is no longer too defective. So kx plus one minus epsilon b is not uh, too defective uh, for any epsilon positive. Then we conclude that xb admits a weak zariski decomposition. In other words, up to passing to some higher model, k plus b decomposes into an f and an effective divisor. And I would like here to um, give a sketch of this proof. So, um, essentially, the first part is technical, so we'll just say uh, by running uh, certain carefully chosen MMPs. Uh, to, to prove the statement, uh, we may reduce to the following situation. So we have, of course, our um, log canonical per XP. And uh, by running these MMPs, we also have uh, a vibration. from X to T um, such that 
uh, the dimension of t is positive and strictly smaller than the dimension of x. And moreover, uh, we can write k plus b as uh, the pullback of some QRTQ divisor uh, dt on t. And in this setting, uh, we may apply um, the so-called the canonical bundle formula, and uh, which implies that there exists uh, there exist divisors, two divisors, BT and MT on T, uh, such that we may write K plus B as the pullback of kt plus bt plus mt, where now uh, on the base t, we have essentially endowed it with a structure of a generalized pair, of a log canonical generalized pair. And as I said before, its dimension is more than the dimension of x. And because of this, essentially by induction, uh, the pair TBT plus MT admits a weak zeta to decomposition by my high, by, by assumptions in lower dimensions. And because of this relation, let's say star, um, my original pair XB uh, admits a weak zeta to decomposition which proves the statement. Um, what is interesting about this proof and which I would like to state is that you see that we have some assumptions about generalized pairs in lower dimensions, and we have a statement about usual pairs. And if we do not work in the setting of generalized pairs, then this proof breaks down. So, I mean, this is one of the reasons why it is useful to, to work with generalized pairs, because they allow us, by working this larger category, to obtain statements about pairs, which would not be uh, obtainable otherwise. It, so, in a sense, we, we want to solve a problem, we pass to a larger category, and then we can solve this problem in this larger category. And um, I would also like to make then a small remark that um, an analogous statement holds for G pairs, essentially with the same proof. So have X G pairs uh, such that J plus B plus M is uh, too defective, but K plus B plus one one exception M is not too defective for any epsilon. Essentially, so theorem one and this uh, variant of theorem one, my remark, allow us to obtain uh, the following theorem, which is uh, fundamental. Uh, it's a fundamental theorem regarding the existence of weak Zariski decompositions. And this was obtained again by uh, Lazis and me. The existence of um, Weak Zariski decompositions for smooth varieties of dimension n implies uh, the existence of uh, weak Zariski decompositions for log canonical generalized pairs of dimension n. So if we can prove the existence in the, of weak zariski decompositions in the simplest possible setting, 
namely in the setting of smooth varieties, then we can deduce the existence of weak selective decompositions in the most general setting, namely for low canonical generalized pairs. Um, I would just say here that uh, the idea of the proof uh, is to proceed by induction and the dimension and to use uh, the previous two theorems. And if I have some time at the end, maybe I will back, come back to this proof. So, use induction on the dimension and apply uh, theorem one and its variant, which is mentioned in my remark to conclude. And now having stated these uh, results about the existence of weak ZK decompositions, I would like to move on to uh, give some statements concerning the existence of minimal models, which is, as I mentioned, one of the central problems uh, of the minimal model program. We have uh, the following theorem. So we assume the existence of uh, minimal models for smooth varieties of dimension uh, n minus one. And we consider now, so let x b plus m be uh, Q factorial, log canonical generalized pair of dimension n. Moreover, we assume that either um, the G pair X B plus M admits a weak zeta decomposition or that it's a canonical class k plus b plus m is not so defective. Then there exists a k plus b plus m mmp uh, which terminates um, with either uh, a minimal model of x b plus m when we are in the first case, so when we work under assumption A, or uh, with uh, a more fiber space of uh, XP plus M. Um, so, so far, essentially, this theorem tells us that modulo these mild assumptions in lower dimensions, the existence of minimal models is essentially equivalent to the existence of weak zeriski decompositions even in this uh, very general setting of generalized pairs. And in particular, we can draw also some consequences in lower dimensions. So if n is at most four, and so if and k plus b plus m is too defective, then um, the generalized pair X B plus M uh, has a minimal model. And if the dimension of N is, so if N is at most five and K X plus B plus M is not too defective,
then uh, x b plus m has uh, a Mori fiber space. So um, I would like then to make uh, a few remarks orally. Um, so I already said that this theorem tells us that the existence of minimal modules is equivalent to the existence of uh, Mori fiber spaces. And it also allows us to draw some conclusions in uh, low dimensions. And the reason for this is that the existence of minimal models for smooth varieties was already proved uh, in the 1987, uh, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, by uh, Kawamata, Matsuda, and Matsuki. And about, let's say, 30, 35 years later, we can eventually have uh, a statement about usual pairs and also of uh, log canonical, I mean, usual pairs of dimension four and even uh, log canonical generalized pairs. And uh, regarding now the existence of uh, Mori fiber spaces, uh, Birkar and Jag have shown the existence of Mori fiber spaces in any dimensions under some X assumptions. And here with this result, we uh, managed to show them the existence of Mori fiber spaces up to dimension five uh, in, in this low canonical Q factorial setting. So, I mean, our extra assumption is essentially Q factoriality which we would like to get rid of. But currently, it is only possible to run an MMP in the setting of generalized pairs under this assumption. Um, and having stated now this theorem, I would also like to make to give a few more corollaries of this theorem. And this leads me to uh, theorem four, which I was also obtained by uh, myself and Lazic. Again, in low dimensions, we assume uh, the existence of minimal models. For uh, smooth varieties of dimension uh, n minus one. And we consider uh, xb uh, a log canonical pair of dimension n. Uh, such that uh, the underlying variety X is uh, uniruled. And its canonical divisor K plus B um, is pseudo effective. So, I mean, if X were smooth, then the, the condition that X is uniruled would be equivalent to the fact that KX is not pseudo effective. So we can also think about this as XB has pseudo effective canonical class K plus B, but KX itself is not pseudo effective. And in this setting, the conclusion is that XB has a minimal model. In particular, um, pairs as above of dimension at most five uh, have minimal models. And as a remark, uh, I would also like to, to mention that an analogous statement also holds in the setting of generalized pairs. So an analogous statement holds for Q factorial and log canonical generalized pairs. 
And moreover, I would like to emphasize that, especially uh, when the dimension of X is five, then this is one of the first theorem of its kind proving existence of minimal models in uh, dimension five. And finally, uh, um, I would like to state one last theorem. So, which was again obtained by uh, Laditz and myself. So earlier we saw that um, the existence of weak Zariski decompositions for smooth varieties implies the existence of weak Zariski decompositions for low canonical pairs. And having already said that essentially it is more or less equivalent to have a weak Zariski decomposition or a minimal model, one may wonder if such a similar implication holds when we are dealing strictly with minimal models. And this theorem says that the answer is yes. So more precisely, the existence of um, minimal models for smooth varieties of dimension n implies uh, the existence of um, minimal models for uh, log canonical pairs of dimension n and two, the existence of minimal models for um, Q factorial log canonical generalized pairs of uh, dimension N. So essentially, uh, to prove the existence of minimal models in the most general setting is equivalent to proving it in the setting of smooth varieties. And we hope that it is much easier to work with smooth varieties and get such a statement and hence deduce the most general setting, the statement in this most general setting. And for this theorem, I would also like to give uh, a sketch of the proof. And uh, let me just mention that one is uh, similar to two. So I will focus on two. So our assumption is the existence of uh, minimal models for uh, smooth varieties of uh, dimension n. It is fairly easy to check then that this implies the existence of minimal models for smooth varieties of um, dimension at most n. And uh, this is actually a nice trick uh, which was due to Hasizume. And as I already said, the existence of minimal models implies the existence of weak Zariski decompositions for smooth varieties of dimension at most n. So we did use the existence of weak Zariski decompositions. And then uh, by theorem two, we deduce the existence of weak Zariski decompositions for um, log canonical generalized pairs of dimension at most n. And then um, theorem three tells us now that uh, we can deduce the existence of minimal models for such generalized pairs. And yes, remember that um, this theorem three told us that under mild assumptions in lower dimensions, if my pair or my generalized pair admits a weak Zariski decomposition, then it also has a minimal model. And 
And um, yes, um, this is all I would like to say for today. And I would like to thank you for your attention.